Ludwig Wilhelm Erhard, the 4th of February 1897, the 5th of May 1977, was a German politician affiliated with the CDU, and the second Chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany from 1963 until 1966. He is known for leading the West German post-war economic reforms and economic recovery in his role as Minister of Economic Affairs under Chancellor Konrad Adenauer from 1949 to 1963. During that period he promoted the concept of the social market economy, on which Germany's economic policy in the 21st century continues to be based. In his tenure as Chancellor, however, Erhard lacked support from Adenauer, who remained chairman of the party until 1966, and failed to win the public's confidence in his handling of a budget deficit, and his direction of foreign policy. His popularity waned, and he resigned his chancellorship on 30 November 1966. Chapter 1 – Early Life Ludwig Erhard was born in Fürth in the Kingdom of Bavaria on 4 February 1897. His father was Wilhelm Erhard, a Catholic middle-class clothing store proprietor, while his mother Augusta was a Protestant. Ludwig had two brothers and a sister, Rose, all of whom were raised as Protestants. Ludwig suffered from infantile paralysis in his third year, resulting in a deformed right foot and forcing him to wear orthopedic shoes for the remainder of his life. Erhard entered primary school in Furt at the age of six in 1903 and performed poorly. In 1907, he entered Furt's Royal Bavarian Vocational High School, where his grades were average. He received his secondary school certificate in 1913. He was a commercial apprentice at the Georg Eisenbock Textile Company in Nuremberg from 1913 to 1916. After his apprenticeship he worked as a retail salesman in his father's draper's shop. Chapter 2 – Military Service and University In 1916, during World War I, Erhard volunteered for the German military. He was referred to the 22nd Royal Bavarian Artillery Regiment, and trained as a gun aimer. He first served in the Quiet Vosges sector on the Western Front. The regiment was then deployed to Romania on the Eastern Front, where he also saw little combat. Erhard contracted typhus, and was sent back to Germany. He recovered and returned to his unit. He was badly wounded on his left shoulder, side and leg by an allied artillery shell on the 28th of September 1918 during the 5th Battle of Ypres. He was committed to a military hospital in Recklinghausen, where he underwent seven operations until June 1919. His left arm became permanently shorter than his right one dot because of his injury, he could no longer work as a draper and started learning economics in late 1919 at a business college in Nuremberg. He passed the school's exit examination on the 22nd of March 1922 and received a degree in business administration. During his time at school, he developed a friendship with the economist and professor Wilhelm Reiger, to whom Erhard owed much of his liberal convictions. Thanks to Reiger's intervention, Erhard was able to enroll at the University of Frankfurt, in the autumn of 1922. He received his PhD from the university on the 12th of December 1925, for a dissertation finished in the summer of 1924 under Franz Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer's liberal socialist ideology had a heavy influence on Erhard, especially Oppenheimer's opposition to monopolies. During his time in Frankfurt he married Louise Schuster, a fellow economist, on the 11th of December 1923. They had known each other since childhood. Chapter 3, Early Career After his graduation they moved to Furt and he became an executive in his father's company in 1925. Erhard spent the next three years as a mostly unemployed academic. His father retired in 1928. The same year, thanks to the help of Reiger and Oppenheimer, Erhard became a part-time research assistant at the Institut für Wirtschaftsbeobachtung der Deutschen Fertigware, a marketing research institute founded by Wilhelm Rudolf Mann and de Wilhelm Verschofen. Later, he became deputy director of the institute. During World War II he worked on concepts for a post-war peace however, 
Officially such studies were forbidden by the Nazis, who had declared total wehr. As a result, Erhard lost his job in 1942, but continued to work on the subject by order of the Reichsgrupp industry. He wrote War Finances and Debt Consolidation in 1944, in this study he assumed that Germany had already lost the war. He sent his thoughts to Karl Friedrich Gudula, a central figure in the German resistance to Nazism, who recommended Erhard to his comrades. Erhard also discussed his concept with Otto Ohlendorf, Deputy Secretary of State in the Reichsministerium für Wirtschaft. Ohlendorf himself spoke out for active and courageous entrepreneurship, which was intended to replace bureaucratic state planning of the economy after the war. Erhard was an outsider who completely rejected Nazism, supported resistance, and endorsed efforts to produce an economic revival during the post-war period. Chapter 4, After the War After the war Erhard became an economic consultant. Under the by zone established by the American and British administration in 1947, he led the Sunderstell Geld und Credit, an expert commission preparing the currency reform in Germany's western zones of occupation. The commission began its deliberations in October 1947, and the following April produced the so-called Homburg Plan, elements of which were adopted by the Allies in the currency reform that set the stage for the recovery of the economy. In April 1948, Erhard was elected Director of Economics by the Bizonal Economic Council. On 20 June 1948, the Deutsche Mark was introduced. Erhard abolished the price fixing and production controls that had been enacted by the military administration. This exceeded his authority, but he succeeded with this step. Chapter 5, Minister of Economic Affairs in the first free elections following the Nazi era, Erhard stood for election in a Baden-Württemberg district and was elected. He was appointed Federal Minister for Economic Affairs, a position he would hold for the next 14 years, from 1957 to 1963 he was also the second Vice-Chancellor of Germany. A staunch believer in economic liberalism, Erhard joined the Mont Pelerin Society in 1950, and used this influential body of liberal economic and political thinkers to test his ideas for the reorganization of the West German economy. Some of the society's members were members of the Allied High Commission, and Erhard was able to make his case directly to them. The Mont Pelerin Society welcomed Erhard because this gave its members a welcome opportunity to have their ideas tested in real life. Late in the 1950s, Erhard's ministry became involved in the struggle within the society between the European and the Anglo-American factions, and sided with the former. Erhard viewed the market itself as social and supported only a minimum of welfare legislation. However, Erhard suffered a series of decisive defeats in his effort to create a free, competitive economy in 1957, he had to compromise on such key issues as the anti-cartel legislation. Thereafter, the West German economy evolved into a conventional welfare state from the basis that had been already laid in the 1880s by Bismarck. According to Alfred Mirzaevsky the generally accepted view is that Germany has a social market economy, that the post-war German economy has evolved since 1948, but the fundamental characteristics of that economic system have not changed, while in his opinion the social market economy had begun to fade in 1957, disappearing entirely by the late 1960s. In July 1948, a group of southwest German businessmen attacked the restrictive credit policy of Erhard as economic director. While Erhard had designed this policy to assure currency stability and stimulate the economy via consumption, business feared the scarcity of investment capital would retard economic recovery. Erhard was also deeply critical of a bureaucratic institutional integration of Europe on the model of the European coal and steel community. Erhard decided, as economic director for the British and American occupation zones, to lift many price controls in 1948, despite opposition from both the social democratic opposition and allied authorities. Erhard's financial and economic policies soon proved widely popular as the German economy made a miracle recovery to rapid growth and widespread prosperity in the 1950s, overcoming wartime destruction and successfully integrating millions of refugees from the East. 
Chapter 6, Chancellor After the resignation of Adenauer in 1963, Erhard was elected Chancellor with 279 against 180 votes in the Bundestag on 16 October. In 1965, he was re-elected. From 1966 to 1967, he also headed the Christian Democratic Union as de facto chairman, despite the fact that he was never a member of that party, as he never formally filed a membership application despite pressures from Chancellor Adenauer. The reasons for Erhard's reluctance are unknown, but it is probable that they stem from Erhard's general skepticism about party politics. However, Erhard was regarded and treated as a long-time CDU member and as the party chairman by almost everyone in Germany at the time, including the vast majority of the CDU itself. The fact that he was not a member was known only to a very small circle of party leaders at the time, and it did not become known to the public until the year 2007, when the silence was finally broken by Erhard's close advisor Horst Wunscher. Domestically, a number of progressive reforms were carried out during Erhard's time as Chancellor. In the field of Social Security, housing benefit was introduced in 1965. Chapter 7 Section 1 Foreign Policy Erhard considered using money to bring about the reunification of Germany. Despite Washington's reluctance, Erhard envisaged offering Nikita Khrushchev, the leader in Moscow, massive economic aid in exchange for more political liberty in East Germany and eventually for reunification. Erhard believed that if West Germany were to offer a loan worth $25 billion US to the Soviet Union, then the Soviet Union would permit German reunification. The acting American Secretary of State George Wildman Ball described Erhard's plan to essentially buy East Germany from the Soviet Union as half-baked and unrealistic. Erhard's objective coincided with Khrushchev rethinking his relations with West Germany. The Soviet leader secretly encouraged Erhard to present a realistic proposal for a modus vivendi and officially accepted the Chancellor's invitation to visit Bonn. However, Khrushchev fell from power in October 1964, and nothing developed. Perhaps more importantly, the Soviet Union had received a vast series of loans from the international money markets by late 1964, and no longer felt the need for Erhard's money. Support for the American role in the Vietnam War proved fatal for Erhard's coalition. Through his endorsement of the American goal of military victory in Vietnam, Erhard sought closer collaboration with Washington and less with Paris. Erhard's policy complicated allied initiatives toward German unification, a dilemma that the United States placed on the back burner as it focused on Southeast Asia. Erhard failed to understand that American global interests, not Europe's needs, dictated policy in Washington, D.C., and he rejected Adenauer's policy of fostering good relations with both the United States and France in the pursuit of West German national interest. Faced with a dangerous budget deficit in the 1966-1967 recession, Erhard fell from office in part because of concessions that he made during a visit to U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson. In 1961, while Vice President, Johnson had hosted Konrad Adenauer some two years before the German statesman vacated the chancellorship of the German Federal Republic. In December 1963, Less than a month after he had assumed the American presidency upon the assassination of John F. Kennedy, Johnson staged the first ever presidential barbecue in Erhard's honor. The event was held in and about the Stonewall Elementary School Gymnasium in Stonewall in the Texas Hill Country. As a member of the Texas House of Representatives, Samuel Ely Johnson Jr., Johnson's father, had been sensitive to his German-American constituency and had opposed the Creel Committee's attempt to disparage German culture and isolate German-Americans during World War I. Adenauer and Erhard had also stayed at Johnson's ranch in Gillespie County. Erhard's fall suggested that progress on German unification required a broader approach and a more active foreign policy. Chancellor Willy Brandt in the late 1960s abandoned the Hallstein doctrine of previous chancellors and employed a new Ostpolitik, seeking improved relations with the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe and thereby laying the groundwork for detente and coexistence between East and West. In the 1980s Chancellor Helmut Kohl, however, 
reverted to Erhard's approach in collaborating with the Reagan administration in its hardline anti-Soviet policy. Chapter 7, Resignation and Retirement On 26 October 1966, Minister Walter Scheel resigned, protesting against the budget released the day before. The other ministers who were members of the FTP followed his example, the coalition was broken. On 30 November 1966, Erhard resigned. His successor was Kurt Georg Kiesinger, who formed a grand coalition with the SPD. Erhard continued his political work by remaining a member of the West German Parliament until his death in Bonn from heart failure on 5 May 1977. He was buried in Gemund, near the Tegensee. The Ludwig Erhard Berufsschule in Paderborn, Furt and Munster are named in his honor. Chapter 8 Publications Erhard, Ludwig. Prosperity through Competition, Thames and Hudson. Erhard, Ludwig. The Economics of Success, Thames and Hudson. Chapter 9 Section 1, in German. Berit Bakoy, Jan, Der Vater des Deutschen Wirtschaftswunders, Ludwig Erhard. By High Verlag, Berlin 2004, ISBN 3924933065. Karl Hohmann, Ludwig Erhard. Eine Biographie. Bonn 1997. Hoeers, Peter, Außenpolitik und Erfentlichkeit. Massenmedien, Meinungsverstung und Erkannpolitik in den deutsch-amerikanischen Besammlungen von Erhard bis Brandt. De Greuter Oldenburg, Munchen 2013. Henschel, Volker Ludwig Erhard, Ein Politikerleben. Berlin, Alstein. ISBN 3548-26536-7. Loeffler, Bernhardt, Ludwig Erhard. In, Katharina Weigand, Grosser Gestalten der Bayerischen Geschichte. Herbert Utz Verlag, Munchen 2011, ISBN 978 Roth, Karl Heinz, Das Ende eines Mythos. Ludwig Erhard und der Übergang der Deutschen Wirtschaft von der Annexions und Nashkriegsplanung. 1. 1939 bis 1943. In, 1999. Zeitschrift für Sozialgeschichte Day 20. Bund 21. Jahrhunderts 10, 1995, near 4. ISSN 0930977, S, 53-93. Roth, Karl Heinz, Das Ende eines Mythos. Ludwig Erhard und der Übergang der Deutschen Wirtschaft von der Annexions und Nashkriegsplanung. 2. 1943-1945. bis In, 1999. Zeitschrift für Sozialgeschichte Day 20. Bund 21. Jahrhunderts 13, 1998, near 1, ISSN 0930-9977, S, 